What's up YouTube? Today's video is going to be a bit different. It's going to be a guide on how to kill your opponent one step at a time, forcing their moves, uh, and just taking control of the game by being the aggressor and really suffocating your opponent into into death basically. Like you're I'm not someone that just dives in and goes for the quick kill. I don't think that really works in this game. But there's like a step process that you can follow to to get to the to the to the victory. And I think this game that I played in the Golden League last week uh, is a good example of doing just that. So I'm gonna go over this game. Gonna mostly skip through the early parts. Uh, I just do an aggressive build order where you like super basic first two wheels to come out, cut the goals, and the rest go to sheep. And it, that will give you a pretty quick edge up. It's, this is like the build order on day one of release. It's super, super simple. Um, and the reason that I go for this one is because I want to have tempo. And I'm going to put four fills on the landmark as well. Because we want to uh, we want to be the aggressor here in a friends versus episode game. And there's many ways to be the aggressor. And that's also what this video is about. So we're gonna be aging up pretty pretty quickly, uh, early into the fourth minute, which is good. Um, and we're gonna get that knight queued up. And we've already macro two woods, and we're gonna drop the archery range as soon as we can as we can afford it. So now you might wonder why do you want an archery range? Okay, so in this matchup, I'm playing French, and you know when you play French, your opponent's gonna go spear because they need them to defend their resources. Um, Obvious, like nothing too complicated. So I want to have archers to counter the spears. And the thing with the archers is, it's just gonna walk away, right? I'm not gonna be able to kill the spears. But what allows me, what what the archers allow me to do, is that he is forced to build his second DC defensively, like without scouting. It's opposite, and he's gonna go to DC. He cannot go trade wing. I'm just gonna kill the traders with French, um, and he's just gonna go to TC to get an advantage there. So I can blindly, even without scouting, I know he's gonna go to TC. And my army, I'm just gonna use it to make sure that TC doesn't go down, for example, on this hunt. I don't want it to secure resources. I want it to secure as little resources as possible. And a lot of my game plan is, is around um, around my opponents, not securing enough resources and then being forced into a farm tradition and that's where I try to win games. So I see that the stone is being mined. I have my unit here, making sure he doesn't DC on this there. We saw the fills go down, so he's probably gonna DC like here or something. Or here if he could, but we don't allow that. So the spears were defending the goals. We scout a little bit around, we didn't get much scouting done yet. And now we're gonna look and okay, we're gonna see the second DC. So we have a good army here, superior army, and we're gonna try to do some damage. And against weaker opponents, um, you might be able to do a lot of damage here. They might have gone too greedy with their DC and then you can just outright win because you have Archer Knight. Um, but obviously this is a game at a higher level, so it's not as easy. But what we forced is his TC to be uh, not secure much of the map. So he will get these berries, but he will not get any of the hunts. So he's gonna, at some point, he's gonna run out of food based on this. Now, how do you punish a second TC? Well, you can't, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, rams are just kind of bad. And if I, let's say I go just go blacksmith into rams here and I go all in. It, it might work at the lower level, but on the higher level, the opponent is going to be able to fend off the Ram Rush. And then I'm playing 1TC versus 2TC and I lose. So I can't do that. So I just train a couple units, make sure that this gets forced. I'm forcing my opponent into this action. And I'm going 2TC behind it myself because uh, I'm not able to punish a second TC. I'm going to need my own second TC to uh, counteract it. So all of this right now, I I could have told you exactly how this game would go 
like before we even played it, before it even launched. Like I knew everything that Blade was going to be doing and I knew how I would reply to it. It's all just super standard and I think a lot of these sort of matchups are pretty fixed in a sense where um, I, I know what I'm going to have to do. And I'm going to be dropping a second PC here on the deer, scaring some of the map. I'm also going to try to get this Brodex soon enough. I probably should have already got it. And my army is just kind of chilling. Um, because it's going to be hard to do damage. It's going to be able to carry it at the CC. It's going to have spears at his gold. And the scout was also in the area. So I know that he hasn't seen my second PC yet. I, he doesn't know for sure what I'm up to. Um, so now, what is he going to do? He's on the TC. What does an episode player do in this situation against Archer Knight? Well, that he already has Spear, he's gonna add Horseman, which is a very standard comp to try and deal with his army, is Spear Horseman. Um, and in these sort of small numbers where you don't one shot the pikes, it's kinda impossible to defend your archers with your knights because the spears are gonna be walking in, and then the horsemen are gonna end up killing your archers. So my army against Spearmen and horsemen is going to be inferior. Um, so I need to be a bit careful, and that's why I'm playing back a little bit. Okay, so now I see his scout coming into my TC radius, which means he now knows about my TC. Um, and now I need to think how does Blade want to reply to me having a second TC? Because 2TC versus 2TC, I'm going to win this game. Um, Partly because my fills produce slightly quicker, uh, 36 seconds for two fills against 40 seconds for two fills. But mostly because I'm going to have access to these map resources, I'm going to be getting getting the hunts. I have all these berries and stuff, and he is going to run out of stuff. So, when Blade sees this, he must go third TC. You can, he cannot punish this, he cannot attack me. Um, He's going to be forced into going 3TC to try and uh, have the lead and then try to play it from there. So as soon as I see the scout here, I know he's going to go 3TC. And I'm going to be making spears, which a lot of French players don't do, but I think is pretty good. Um, and the spears are just going to be there because I need it to defend my archers. Like if he goes spear horseman... Um, Spears are basically the perfect unit because they they counter the horsemen and then they go even against spears. So it's like the best unit I could make. So I'm going to be adding in spears. And I'm going to be looking when is he going to go on the stone for the uh, third TC that I know he needs to make. And where is he going to make it? So I'm going to be looking at the stone now. I see, okay, he didn't mine for third TC yet, but he should probably start doing that soon. And I see these production buildings here. Obviously barracks is for the spears, we already saw those. Also adding in archers, which is interesting. And then the obvious stables that was already made. And now he's gonna go here for the 30 seat. So what I'm gonna do here, is I'm gonna go double barracks and I'm just producing units. I'm just spamming units, spamming vills from 2 PC. And I'm taking risky map resources because I feel safe. Uh, I have my army. Here being annoying. Or well, not really. I haven't really been annoying, but I have it in the area. And I want to be sure that he doesn't TC the hunt. Um, so here I want to have a little poke in. I want to see if I can raid some vills. And this is somewhere where you might mess up. If I commit into this fight, he's going to have spear horsemen and he's going to overwhelm my army and I'm going to lose it. So my bows cannot be here, and I need my bows to leave. I can I can poke him with my knights, they can always run away. But I don't want to force a fight without having my spears there yet. So, um, I almost messed this up, but I, I realized what I have to do. Or I remembered what I have to do. And I'm poking in with the, with the knights. Doing some damage, and I'm leaving with the bows because I can't defend them. And he's gonna have his army here to try and gather for the 30C. 
So with the spearmen now uh, trickling in, my army is soon going to be superior to his. And we we managed to get like uh, some eco attacks, we got wheelbarrow. And I'm not happy with the spot that I'm in, as long as he doesn't safely secure too many resources. But yeah, we were already fallen back a bit because he had the superior army, but now with the spears coming in, we're gonna have the superior army and, and we can apply some pressure. And still, in my opinion, everything just so far that happened in this game is forced. Uh, I know exactly what he has to do, and when he's gonna do it. Um, no surprises. So he's not on this hunt. We do a little bit of raiding. Try to use that nice uh, potential. And we're just messing up units non-stop. And our army isn't really doing much. And we can see the berries are running out. He's gonna be running low on food. We're, we're containing these food sources. Uh, and, and we'll also check the hunt. So he's going triple comp, I'm going triple comp, and usually that's pretty good for French because the knights can uh, really be superior. Right. So he did get his 30c on the on the deer. I was hoping to prevent that, but I didn't manage. Um, and at this point, you don't want to freak out. I'm on 2tc. I'm gathering up all the resources. Um, and I'm just having a superior army to him, which I'm not doing anything with. I'm not worried about going rams. I don't gonna, I'm not gonna randomly all in. I'm just there, and my presence is enough. Um, and we're gonna be able to build up a better army than him because he's producing Vilsum 3 TC. He's like running out of resources a bit. I'm gonna speed this up, but we're producing non-stop, right? And Blade is in trouble at this point, you can even see it reflect in the score. Um, just because my vills are more efficient. So we see that the horsemen aren't here, he might be looking for a raid. So I, I'm making a tower. And I want him to raid me, because, okay. So this is great. He sent eight horsemen here. Um, and this is exactly what I'm looking for, because my army is superior, but it wasn't superior enough to commit to something. But as soon as he does something like this, he, he goes for a raid because he feels a little bit of desperation. He's falling behind. Um, now that he does this, I have my army is superior enough that I can just full commit to something. So I'm not going to bother falling back to defend. I'm just going to attack this TC. And you will see that even without rams, um, you have so much TC fire, TC damage here with the spear and the, and the knight. And he, he just can't hold this. So we're gonna keep sieging while our archers can start picking up his fills. Uh, sending reinforcements here at an attempt to defend. And now that the he's, he feels forced to take this fight, but there's just no way that he's going to be able to beat this army with spear archers. I'm just dwindling the pike numbers with my, with my archers. The spears are just there, like, they're just a good body block. And then we're going to clean up those with the knights. Um, and essentially at this point, the game is very heavily in my control. Um, we killed way more vills than him. We're now back on 2TC versus 2TC, which is where I want to be. Um, and we also took a favorable exchange, and you can see it in the score. So, we're, we have been the aggressor this game, but not really, right? Like, we're playing it slow and steady. We're just constantly just being there, being, uh, being annoying, having the presence, denying resources. 
And now, um, since we have, since we had such a, that's pretty bad. Since we had such a favorable, favorable fight, um, what does Blade have to do at this point? Well, he has to mess back up. He has to keep making units. Uh, in terms of micro, I mostly just micro the knights. They can, you want to have them not fight the spears at all. And then my spears are just such a good unit here. They can just frontline all the time. So he's gonna be forced to remass units because my army is too superior. And this is where I stop production. So, or at least slow it down. Um, because I already have this military advantage. And now I wanna kill him. I wanna I wanna put this game in the books. And how do you kill someone? You have to be H3. You cannot kill people in H2 unless there's like uh, some crazy stuff happening or like a big skill difference or whatever. Versus higher competition, uh, you just gotta be H3. So what's interesting that I do here is that I fall back with my entire army because I know um, when I'm gonna be looking to H up, that's when I'm weakest. And if there's ever a time that he could take a fight to come back, uh, it would be now because I'm stacking resources for aging up. I'm gonna be waiting on my techs. And I, I know that he can't be aging at the moment because he had to remass to deal with my army. So we're being annoying, making sure he's making units, that he's not randomly aging up. And we're gonna age up ourselves. And these timings on these age ups are extremely important. I, I had to get the advantage first, I had to deal with the 30C first, I had to take a favorable fight. Uh, and now I can look to aging up. So we're putting it here where we know he might come and raise. Um, making sure he's not on these parries. And the problem that Blade has in this game is that he needs 3TC, but if he goes 3TC again, um, uh, he's just gonna die. And he's been forced into making these farms because he didn't have access to these, all these food. Which is a lot of investment that he has to make, which I'm not making. I don't have any farms. Oh, sorry, I do. <laughs> I do have some farms, my bad. But I'm taking hunts, uh, taking berries, maybe go for the boar, all this good stuff. And as soon as I age, I get all the techs. And the tech that I always consider most important is the second range armor, because that allows you to dive a TC. And we're just chilling, waiting for attacks, knowing that he. There's no way he uh, is going to be able to deal with the push that I have coming in soon. Uh, let's put some horsemen here. So we're also getting the cavalry HP, but I'm not too worried about it. Another thing, I always love to get my textiles. I just think it's a very underrated tech. So even in the game where I have control, I still get it. Um, but yeah, the most important thing is our veteran Royal Knights is finished, and our second range armor is finished. Um, and we know he's on this wood line, so I left this here to go and raise. And we can just kind of start diving in now, because uh, we're going to have an H3 army versus uh, H2 army. So we go for the double attack, one raiding group and one uh, just pushing. And I'm cool taking a fight, uh, we're killing a lot of hills here, he's not going to have all the garrison space that he needs. And we're having the archers dwindle the pike numbers. And once the pikes go down, uh, we're just going to have these H3 knights. H3 knights also trade really well against pikes, so... So yeah, we're completely arresting his eco, uh, taking map control. You can also get our relics behind this if you, if you want to but um he's really bleeding fills and when the dust settles this eco is going to be down that so much because we have been on these two pc rather than just playing it safe on one or playing it all in on one so we're we're not completely going for the kill here we're just leaving him in shambles um, 
Also, training men at arms here. I think uh, it's really good because he's not gonna have the units to deal with us. He's gonna try to mix in crossbows. But the main thing is that the game is basically over because we're on 85 hills and he's gonna be on 60. And yeah, we're even gonna try to take this hunt. We're just completely taking the map. And we're gonna have this super strong uh, with three knights. It's, it's not really possible for him to just randomly have like 40 crossbows because Zico is just hurting too much. It's being idled, it's dying. It's, uh, I'm not giving him the momentum or the time that he, need, that he needs. And I'm kind of just trickling in units. Uh, probably should get like uh, the monks or the relics now. I don't know if I got it, but this is a good good time for it to further cement your your lead in the game. I'm also gonna uh, go on stone, try and grab the keep. But yeah, the game is uh, essentially over. And we're like we're bleeding units here, but we're constant constantly killing vills. We're not allowing him to use his farms. We have all these random annoying raids. Kind of just everywhere. Yeah, like trying to split off the uh, the knights a bit. One there, one there. Gonna go for a keep. Uh, I could probably have pushed this a bit more forward, but it's mostly so I can go into trebuchet and then uh, he can't contest the keep at all. So that means the trebuchet is gonna be able to do a lot of damage. And yeah, we're we're just super far ahead, in Nico. So he did go 3TC again. He, he wants like a Hail Mary to catch up, but yeah, we're uh, constantly applying the pressure now. When you when, once you hit H3 and you are able to dive TCs and stuff, that's when you can really apply pressure all the time. Uh, yeah, trebuchet to start seating his stuff. And yeah, he decides to tap out. The eco difference is just too big. He's Losing stuff all over the place. So, uh, it's this game. So, why I wanted to make this video is because the there's a lot of people that don't know how to punish greets, and this is something that I often get questions about. And I think this is something that I do really well. Like, if there, this is probably one of my main strengths: it's being the aggressor, taking control, etc. Um, and I think this is this game is a good showcase of just non-stop forcing your opponent's choices. And I know exactly how he's going to play. I know what he's going to do. And he has to do it because if he doesn't, he's behind. It's kind of like as if you're playing chess and you're just constantly putting your opponent in check. Okay, check there. Okay, you have to do this move. Check. Okay, you have to do this move. Check, 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 check. And eventually you find a checkmate. That's kind of how I see it. I, uh, I think... Even though this is, in general, considered a hard matchup, and you know, at the very, very top level it might be, I think Blade and me are obviously a high level, but not the very, very top. Um, and yeah, I, I think this was a really interesting game to um, give you guys some pointers on following the steps. So first of all, force your opponent's TC placement. Then. Um, Get your own second TC in a case like this, so that you because you cannot punish his safe second TC. And if I try to punish it, then it's gonna fill, and he's gonna just have too many vills lead that he can just say like afford a farm transition without much trouble because his vill lead is too big. Um, then when your army is inferior, so knight archer against pike horseman is gonna lose in small numbers. Do not cut caught, so keep your archer, archer safe. Um, keep con control, but never overcommit. Just look for your opponent's weaknesses, 
check out what, what's his armor size at. Can I beat him or not? Um, punish that dirty C. Like all these steps that I did when, when I age, I pulled my army back because I need to get my technologies. This is when I'm per I'm weakest at that point of time. All these small little things, it's all, for me, it's really natural RTS flow. Um, but for some other people that might not come as natural. And what's interesting in this game is that Blade did all these steps that he had to do, which made it still an interesting game. But you have to imagine if you're playing at your own elo, which, uh, like let's say you're playing gold, you might already just outright win the game with your two knights and two archers because you're hitting with so much tempo. Or, you know, you, you might outright win um, from him not making enough units. Or there are so many, like if he, there's so many steps that he has to follow to keep up. Uh, and all these steps are constantly giving me a small, small advantage. So if you're playing a weaker opponent, they're not going to be able to do that and you can just beat them. So yeah, overall, hope you guys enjoyed this, this guide, this video. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, thanks for those that watched till the end and uh, <laughs> I'll see you in the next one.